Hello and welcome to the Inside Stylist podcast where we talk all about interiors with interviews with interior stylists, writers and the fabulous homeware brands that make a house a home. I also catch up with industry experts in the know and get them to share all their knowledge and advice. There's so much to talk about. I'm your host Emma Morton Turner, an interior stylist and writer with a ton of experience. I set up InsideStylist.com so I can share all that interiors love with you. So don't forget to head on over to the website for not only the show notes from today's episode, but regular interior blog posts and a whole host of inspiration on the interior stylists and writers profiles. But for now, enjoy the show. Today's guests are a design duo who have turned the mid-century modern design vibe on its head. Launching in 2006, they started designing applied pattern across a range of products, including wallpapers, fabrics, cushions, rugs and ceramics. With the first collection being snapped up by heels, they knew they were onto a winner. Their design influences range from mid-century British textiles and vintage toys, literature to travel from both home and abroad. Their style and ethos is instantly recognisable, and their brand has grown from strength to strength. With a great new book out all about mid-century modern living, I can't think of anyone better to talk about this design style with than today's guests. I'm very excited to introduce Keith Stevenson and Mark Hampshire of Mini Moderns. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. So normally I would say thank you very much for coming to my home. But actually what I'm going to say is my husband says thank you for coming to my home because it means I've had a really good tidy up and all the props have been put away. <laughs> That's why you didn't come to our home. <laughs> so you come up from Dungeness this morning though, haven't you? Is that your weekend pad? Yeah, you were the perfect stop between Dungeness and Camberwell where yeah. we're headed next. So uh, yeah, we're... as it always is on a Monday morning, glorious sunshine. Yeah. yeah. And we had to leave. So. So you started Mini Moderns in 2006. Do you want to explain how it started? Um, well, I started by, uh, I was doing, I was a print designer in, in fashion. I worked for Red or Dead and Dr. Martins and companies like that. And Mark was a, um, a designer maker in the 90s. So he was sort of uh, casting mirrors and making cushions and homeware and selling to Heels and Gallery Lafayette. Um, so we kind of had those kind of different backgrounds, yeah. um, and then we met at a branding agency. So basically, the, so for me, the designer maker thing like was really lovely, but didn't make any money. Mm. <laughs> designer <laughs> yeah. make no money, uh, and uh, so yeah. So I decided to get a proper job in design, and I was working in strategy at a, a design company where we did commercial branding and design. Keith was the creative director. We basically got on really well got put on projects together because you always partner up that kind of that's a particular sort of partnership that, yeah. that uh, gets put together and um, I lamented not making things anymore Keith lamented not well not making things not, not, not making not things producing yeah I things. mean and not producing I was so used to working in house in in fashion that I saw everything that I designed have an impact on uh, be produced and have and see what the sales were. Yeah. Um, when we were doing purely conceptual work at the design agency w- that we were at, we it was just it was slightly disheartening because you put lots and lots of effort in and then you would never see it sort of materialise for for a long long yeah. time, and then still nobody knew who'd who'd kind of done it or where the ideas originated from. So that was quite frustrating, wasn't it? But when we did meet, we kind of we we got on really really well. Um, and we had sort of similar tastes in things, and then we realised that we were both like really into um, mid-century um, design. And how did you come? Design. How did you discover that you were both into it? Well, a lot comes from um, I don't know. You kind of uh, so, so what, what did you do at the weekend? And uh, yeah. you said, oh, oh, I went <laughs> looked to, at some fifties shirts. I went to a car boot sale. And yeah, like, I don't know. You just really. I think we got the vibe from. Uh, we both had a really similar um, kind of like our youths were quite similar. We liked yeah. the, although we hadn't. You know, we didn't know each other when we were both sort of sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Uh, we liked the same music. In the eighties, if you liked a certain kind of music, you tended to kind of like refer back to the fifties and sixties. Mm-hmm. They were your reference points. All our kind of culture, like we both like kitchen sink dramas from the 60s. We both like kind of cult TV shows like The Avengers. And and then and then our mu- even our musical taste tended to have kind of retro sort of, mm. um, you so know. So if you kind of sort of, if, if in the 80s you were sort of into indie music, um, mainly they, uh, you know, the people that made that music wore kind of 1950s, 
clothes that they'd buy from charity shops yeah. and second hand shops and we were we were the same um, so you kind of dressed the same sort of thing. Yeah, they, almost. We we looked very similar when we were young, didn't we? Pictures oh, of us a picture in, in yeah, the book. Yeah, and we, kind of people have said which ones which ones which. Um, so we did kind of have a very similar style, but all of our friends had that kind of style. We all used to shop at secondhand shops, make clothes out of fifties curtains. It was very kind of DIY, wasn't it? Mm, um, yeah. When we were growing up and. Um, so kind of obviously we were we were older when we met, but we I, I suppose just reminisced about we had it. all the same yeah. references, had all the same references. So it was kind of the obvious thing, really, wasn't it? But so fast forward to we left the design agency where we met. We then set up a an, our own boutique design agency, um, and then we got commissioned to do a wallpaper for a South London boutique uh, interiors uh, shop, and that sort of we you know we got the bug of mm. um, and and, and mm. so what we really started to enjoy was although we were still doing commercial branding and, and design what we were really enjoying was pattern making and we started to introduce more and more pattern making into our into design, our design work. work as well yeah so it kind of fed into uh the product as well as feeding into vice versa sort of fed into our branding work as well um and then of course as Thankfully, like it became more successful, so it actually started taking over, taking over from doing commercial branding, which we do mm. very little of now, mm. don't we? But yeah. we still, we still do some. Yeah, you can squeeze that in. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, can you, so for anyone who hasn't seen Mini Modern's products, can you describe them? Um, well, as we've sort of mentioned, that there's a definite mid-century influence on them. Um, one of the things that we would say about our brand and our ethos is that we we talk about pattern with a story, mm. and um, you can probably tell because we've got <laughs> we're always telling stories about things. Um, everything that we do has a certain personal kind of narrative behind mm. it, so we tend to start thinking about a design by talking about a book that we both enjoyed in the past, or a memory of a childhood holiday, or a or a film that we've enjoyed or like so so those things it, there's a personal narrative mm. behind everything so that sort of feeds into what we do yeah i mean it's quite an eclectic mix we're not we're not mid century purists no. um because kind of even in our youth you know a, a lot of things are kind of the fifth <clears throat> the, the like when we grew up in in the early 80s a lot of things were 50s reference but seen through um, the prism of, of the 80s and kind of the same again there's, there's a kind of progression so although they're kind of uh, our prints are a lot of them are mid-century inspired they're, they're very contemporary um, they just start with the same kind of attitude and, mm. um, and we never start our prints visually they're always words, mm. so um, we'll we'll words discuss a, words it. as in like we we start tell, we start talking about yes. an idea, yes, and then we formulate it, and then we we draw on lots of reference. Mm. So we'll and you know we do a lot of our kind of like idea generation by um, we're constantly mooching around secondhand shops mm-hmm. and junk shops, and you know we've just been down on the south coast looking yeah. at St Leonard's <laughs> and Hastings and oh like, my goodness, all those places. And rye. Are, yeah, <gasps> yeah. And yeah, so all of that stuff. Um, just kind of naturally feeds in. You, yeah. sort of like, you know, you'll see some sort. Of, you know, if we had more space, we would probably have about twenty cro- crockery collections. <laughs> yeah. because, you know, you just you, as yeah. opposed to the four that we already yeah. have. Yeah. Like, so, um, <laughs> but all those things sort of feed in. I suppose one thing that we would say about our designs is that they they are very strongly graphic, aren't they? They've got yes. a strong graphic yeah. kind of like bold graphic style. Um, and you have uh, a look. It's very. Dis- Dis, um, distinguishable. Yes, you can see yeah. that it's you. You can see that it's got that that kind of mid-century vibe. Yes. but it's also got. It's like a modern version. It, yes, it just yeah. The colours you use and everything. I think probably also because of our branding and graphics background, there is a yeah. You're the whole package. <laughs> you are. Like if you can do branding, you can do design. You're actually manufacturing products. You you literally have it all. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes that's sometimes it would be nice not to know. Not to about know everything. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so we, we maybe we're control freaks. We kind of have yeah. We we like to be in control of the whole package, though, don't we? Mm. It's interesting what you're saying about using words first because um, I just taught a, a interior styling class and when I said to everyone, right, we're going to do mood boards. 
think of three words that literally are the mood of the room you want to design. So I showed them an example when I was doing my daughter's bedroom when she was, I think she was 13. And I said, it has to be crisp, it has to be light, and it has to be teen. And then you find all the images that go with that. And then you come up with a colour scheme. And it yes. all, it's like you say, it ties into a story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you do, you do mm. need to have an anchor or you're all over the place. Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, the other thing about our prints is like, we, we do... Uh, base some of our prints on, on sort of literature like mm. our Buddha of Suburbia collection was entirely um, all about one book mm. um, or our one day um, wallpaper is uh, it's a it's a um, series of windows I was going to say the windows one the windows. oh I and, love that it's and, so clever and inside each window is a scene from one of our favourite yeah. 1960s films so yeah. it's like we, we kind of treat them a bit like puzzles or games sometimes yeah we well, had we? we had quite a lot in, in inside our inside our prints I mean most of our prints are kind of monochrome I mean they're they're all s uh, single colour we very rarely push the boat out mm. do we for three colours but that's um, but that's your look I think that's what <laughs> yeah. gives you that real <laughs> Mm. It's, it's very so thrifty. Clean and... yeah. <laughs> That's not why you do it, though, is it? It's not to be no. thrifty. <laughs> Limit, limitation is sometimes, yeah. you know. Mm. And I think you you probably agree when you're you know teaching that. Um, sometimes people think that the, the most exciting thing is to say do whatever you want to do. Mm. Well, actually, mm. most creative people, if you say do whatever, you need to put create. your own, Absolutely. even your own Editing creative choice. Exactly. Yeah. And you, you need to, sort of, so, so in a way we sort of almost set ourselves our own creative brief mm. by, by kind of making ourselves, um, also Keith's fashion past has a lot to do with this because he's been used to working in collections, you mm. know, in fashion it's much more yes. usual to sort of name a collection explain what the theme is and then create from that yeah and sometimes you can kind of look at a fashion collection and think well I'm not quite sure how that print came out of the name yeah of the of the collection but then you start to see the creative process going through and you see how it all yeah. kind of comes it together links yeah so there are some there are some slightly obtuse mm. um well I think that's what makes I think that's what makes us who we are because of working in that slightly out of interiors, bringing it back into interiors, um, uh, sort of concept and sort of ethos, because mm. we don't know how to start a collection without having a really strong concept or or a story. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be mm. very focused. Yes. Yeah. 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 So mid-century has become very popular recently. I think it's been rumbling and growing. I mean, mm. if you work in interiors, you have seen that happen. But now it just seems to be everywhere. Do you? Why do you think that is? Um, I think mid-century has now kind of gone into the realms of classic design, I think. Yeah. Because obviously we're talking about... I mean, the interesting thing about mid-century anyway is that it can cover... A whole period from yeah. The, I was just yeah, going to say that because you say mid-century, and you think, well, it should be like forties, fifties, sixties, maybe. But yeah, actually, but you could even go, go back to, to the thirties like and like you know up to eighties, maybe. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, and then you could also then say, well, actually, mid-century comes out of pure modernism, which is where Bauhaus mm. starts, and we're just celebrating the one hundred years yeah. of Bauhaus. Mm. So really. We almost kind of, even when we think of mid-century, we, we, we would always sort of say there's a sort of 50, 60 sweet spot of mm. what, what people probably, uh, uh, where a, it was such a prevalent thing and, and, and mm. there was so much growth. But kind of all the groundwork had been done much, much earlier on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, and I suppose because things have now become a, a, a bit of a kind of classic, um, people... People, it's easy to incorporate classic design mm. into yeah. a, a whole range of schemes, isn't it? And I it? think also, I mean, if you just think about kind of um, a lot of people these days live, live in open plan kitchen and yeah. living areas. I mean, that's a mid-century concept. Yeah. That actually, as much as people think kind of, oh, that's new, I'm going to knock the back out of my house and have a big open plan room. That's actually a mid-century concept, mm. which possibly a lot of people don't don't know that's no. where it came mm. from. So um, to build a sort of scheme, a design scheme around living in open plan, mid-century furniture and just its attitude um, sort of works because um, the furniture's usually a pretty good proportion. It's mm. not big and plump and mm. fills up a space. And we always sort of say when 
you know, the, the, a great way to sort of make a, a room look much bigger is to have kind of uh, sort of narrow legs and so you can see the floor. So it gives a yeah. bigger yeah, sense those, of space. Yeah. I think those kind of clean lines, that sort of like quite uh, mi- <coughs> sort of minimal design, it does help in smaller mm. spaces. And the more that people are living now in, in sort of, you know, like small, as Keith said, yeah, like sm- small spaces, rented. Rented so, spaces. Yeah. Um, I think it's quite easy to... Um, the, the other thing is the whole upcycling thing. I think mm. like, um, mm. the, the fact that people are more and more keen to not necessarily go out and spend money on kind of disposable furniture. Yeah, but we were talking to, about that earlier, weren't we, yeah, about how, yeah. like, you're not putting things in landfill and it's, yes. it's kind of bringing things back. Also, um, brown furniture is suddenly very popular. Yes. Like, people would buy furniture and then paint it to fit in with whatever colour, whether they make it look a little bit rusty, like yes. mine. Yeah. Or <laughs> yeah. Everything's peeling and scraped off. Or you just do it a flat colour to make it look a bit modern. But now yeah. people are bringing in those pieces that I'm leaving them the, the natural wood colour. Yes. And yeah. also, yeah. sideboards went way out of fashion for a long time. And now mm. they're like the big... I think Instagram might have helped. People need a surface to style. Yes, I totally agree. What well, we think that the sideboard is the absolute epitome of, the mid, of mid-century. Mm. And the reason is because, A... It's got a great look. So you introduce a, a sideboard mm. and it ins- you instantly bring a bit of mid-century into your r- home. But the great thing, and this is how things adapt and, and stay, and it's pertinent to your question, the reason that people like sideboards is that they're also incredibly useful. Mm. So, you know, actually, in you know these days, <coughs> you know, if you're into vinyl, mm. you'll probably find that a sideboard is the perfect place to store your vinyl underneath, yeah. put your turntable on top. Yeah. So mm. it's suddenly become a thing for the, you know, or you can just have your telly on there and all your, yeah. like, junk so be- inside it. Behind us, right, or behind me, yes. I've got this whopping great thing, which I call the safe, because it's a big unit that I, um, <laughs> I paint. I think it's 1920s. It's got, like, a cigarette. Um, thing in the door for you pulling or matches out the door it's a, it's actually a cocktail shaker yeah, yes. a cocktail yeah. unit yeah. but there's three boxes of Lego in there Yeah. and the other side is my candle cupboard because if you're a stylist you tend to have a candle cupboard yes. Yes. but yeah. yeah all the other gubbings my DVD and my still have video because we have video so it's all hidden away in oh, there oh we've got so, video yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so <laughs> it's, it's perfect brilliant. for hiding I don't want to look at it yeah. Yeah, exactly but as you say also brilliant perfect for being a you know a, a surface a surface to display all, all your treasures yeah. all your gorgeous stuff or just taking that little Instagram show. you only need half of it don't you yeah, you only that's need right. to Shove style the to the other yeah, end, yeah, insta reality and all uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and you know, we love the fact that something that maybe in the past was considered like, oh, great big cumbersome old thing, mm-hmm. like who wants a great big old sideboard in you, actually now has become adaptable and useful. But I think that's also to do with the fact. I think that the the positive of that is because it is something in your room that you would just say that is a mid century modern piece. It doesn't mean you have to go out and buy lots and lots of 1950s chairs. You can live with all of your other things and Mm. kind of style everything up. But the sideboard will just give a nod and to the room to sort of say it's mid-century influence. Mm. And like you say, it's brilliant for all your little knickknacks going out on the top because you do tend to sort of hide things away. If you can make collections of them, we sort of talk about it in the book, just build a whole interior around your collections yeah. of something that you love and you know a sideboard's a perfect place to sort of yeah. display them all I showed that to my husband in the book look collections <laughs> I'm allowed to shop yeah exactly <laughs> I'm building up this collection what, just a tad reaction? more <laughs> it's a prop darling don't worry go in the garage I'm winking very loudly um, we're going to come around to the book in a second but I read that about what you were saying earlier about being inspired by childhood. There's two designs in your um, wallpaper collection that are massive um, flashes to my past because I was a child of the 70s and 80s. Mm. Um, the, I can't remember the name of it now. Um, we were talking about it earlier. The, um, is it the suburbia one, the, the tiles? Oh, Darjeeling. So mm. that is my childhood <clears throat> kitchen. Yes. And then the pleasure gardens. It's like balloons yes. and they're navy and orange. 
Ah. And it's the navy and orange and the playfulness of that. So we had a playroom in our childhood home. <laughs> and it wasn't, it was just the colours. It was great big tigers and they were navy and orange. And it was like balloons. It was like a circus thing. And when, the moment I saw that um, that wallpaper, I was like, oh my God. That, we never used it as a playroom. It became my brother's bedroom. But it was just that it immediately evokes mm. the memory. And you, mm. you were saying that but, there were stories behind. But I think that's really designs. interesting because our, our patterns are... They start at a very personal place for us. Yeah. All of our patterns, they're either things that we love or have experienced. And um, and it's really interesting that you have a, a take. A different story. Yeah, a different mm. t- story that you actually get from, from our patterns. Mm. Um, and, and we find that all the time. And it's kind of, we, we sort of see a, a lot of our uh, wallpapers in, in different places that we wouldn't expect they'd be used Mm. so um, what we kind of consider might be something that would be a younger wallpaper might end up in in a restaurant Mm. and so we never kind of say where we expect things to turn up yeah we're really Um, unprescriptive mm. because we've learned that it's really fun to for other people to to make their their interpretations Mm. i mean the 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 obvious ones about our childhood are kind of um our whitby print Mm. um it was an it was one of those things where describe it for people who are listening um it's um it's rolling northern seas with um uh fishing boats Mm -hmm. on on it um and um, hungry seagulls and hungry (laughs) (laughs) massive seagulls um and um but when it's a very, it's met. quite, mm. it's got a kind of 50s lino cut kind of mm. style about yeah. it, yeah. doesn't it? So and it's, it's kind of a, con- it's a continuous um, stripe as well. So it's, it's a, it's a rough nautical stripe. Yes. Um, and it was one of those things again, where when Mark and I first met, because we're literally not very far from growing up from each other, are we? Mm. Um and um, so we both used to go when we were little on holiday to Whitby. Really, um, so random. And yeah, yeah. so we were sort of talking about it, and it, it just naturally became. We wanted to do a nautical print, but being us, it had to be anchored in something real to us. We couldn't yeah. just sort of do a nautical print. Anchored? Did you realize uh, it? Oh, <laughs> done, very good. <laughs> nice, yeah. seamless. Yeah. I did it on purpose. Yes. <laughs> um, and um, so when we did actually do a nautical print it it did have to be personal and then all like the story of Whitby and kind of the surrounding areas as as well sort of came out Mark used to go on holiday to Filey as well which is really close and then I grew up near the North Yorkshire Moors which is where Whitby is so and those those boats that we depicted Mm. on on that print are this is where meticulous about research (laughs) so those are actually they're called cobble boats okay and they are specific to the northeast uh, Yorkshire coast. Oh, are they? Mm. Um, and they're designed to have flat bottoms so mm. that they can be launched easily, but very high sides so they can cope with the rough seas. Right. And my dad, when I was a kid, went out with a local fisherman and went on one of those boats fishing for yeah. the day. So, but he put his fish all in the. Oh, my auntie, my auntie Eileen, <laughs> she ran a boarding house. We went and we used to go and stay there over a spring bank holiday. And he came, came back, but Auntie Eileen's uh, husband did market produce. So he was freezing all his ra- raspberries in their new chest freezer. And uh, my dad wanted to put his catch in there. <laughs> and uh, Auntie Eileen wouldn't let him because yeah. she, she thought the fish would take the raspberries. Yeah. It was so a we, terrible we, ending to we, the holiday, we wasn't pa- it? We packed up four days early. And <laughs> so I, you my, could take my, the fish home? <laughs> <laughs> we had, so we had to, no, just out, just because my dad had a... Like, oh, because strike. he was... <laughs> yeah, he didn't care about the fish. He was just like packing the kids up and leaving. Uh, in That's so funny. So. I've got to share a little fish story. Um, <laughs> I, we've got a friend who... Um, he used to He went to school with my husband and he now lives in Spain. But he's a really big fisherman, very, very keen. He's got a boat out in Spain and everything. Not like the cobbler. Right. But um, <laughs> he, when he ca- comes over twice a year to do um, business and check his business is doing well, he goes off and goes fishing. But he's in a hotel, so he's got nowhere to put the fish. <laughs> so he used, we would invite him around for dinner, but he'd always turn up with fish. Well, one time we weren't home and my daughters were home from school and they don't open the door. You know, this no. is a few years ago, but they don't open the door because mm. they're young girls at home on their own. Yeah. And he rang on the doorbell to say, I've been fishing, um, and I've got this fish, but I can't take it home with me or anything, so I'm just going to leave it with you guys, because 
they wouldn't open the door, so he left it on the on in the porch. And then my daughter saw him drive off, so she opened the door and she opened up this bag, and there was these cut gutted fish. In her bag. <laughs> she's vegetarian. Like hate crime. She was mortified, and so I've never never been forgiven for it. And they were mass- they were trout, and they were about four oh. massive trout. Like I couldn't fit them in my freezer. I had to go and give them to all my family. We cut one, and then we go one to my parents, one to his parents, and one to my sister. So fish Numb fish stories. Daughter. Good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now I'm to my daughter. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Fish. It's fish. Interesting. Yeah. Always a story. Yeah. Always a story. But the other print is um, a model print. Yeah. Is really personal to us as well. What does that look like? It's rolling hills. It's basically a landscape print, isn't it? Yeah. With kind of trees and um, and it has two. Uh, two landmarks from natural landmarks from when we were growing up, like Rosebury Topping, where I, I grew up, and um, the Cow and Calf um, near from Ilkley. Ilkley Moor. Yeah. So um, yeah. So we like to put these little personal things. Mm. But, but, um, but we called that print um, Moordale because it was the North Yorkshire Moors and the Yorkshire Dales. So we put them yeah, together. Cool. But also and created was... the name of a new soap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the offshoot to Emma Day, was it Moordale? <laughs> We didn't really think about that one, but anyway, it's, yeah. It's, um. But it was called The Distance Between Us because there's a town on the print called Helmsley, which is absolutely equidistant from where we both grew up. Right. So, um, yeah. so that was sort of included as well. Mm. So lots of things that satisfy us about yeah. it. Yeah, but that's lovely. You know, that's what yeah. makes it so different from other brands. And I, I really like hearing <laughs> the stories about that, which you do in the book really well, actually. You do hear the, the stories behind all the brands. It's oh, very clever you. the way you did that. Um, you pr- produce everything in England. Is that right? Uh, as much as possible in the UK, mm. definitely, yeah. Um, so our... I mean, we're very proud to say that... Um, because we wallpaper is our main... Mm. Uh, output. Really. What was the first product you started with? Was War- that wallpaper, the wallpaper from yeah. the um, origi- from yes. the branding? And then we moved straight moved into, into wallpaper from that as mm. well. We kind of then launched Mini Moderns on the back of doing that range for uh, for that shop, didn't we? Yeah, because we wanted to do pattern, mm. and wallpaper was the obvious thing yeah. to. And because we had looked into the production of wallpaper through mm. the original, yeah, thing. you'd almost done your research so, ahead of launching <coughs> yeah. a wallpaper brand. And then some of our other products, so our, our cushions, for instance, are all screen printed and sewn in um, in a lovely factory in Lincolnshire. Yeah. So um, yeah, it it really helps that we do make in the UK because we can get there yeah. and, and we form relationships with um, the people that we're working with. Mm, mm. That's lovely. Mm. Is there a design that's more popular than others? Is there any that stand out? Um, we have to say our Whitby print mm-hmm. is a perennial favourite. I think I think British people love the seaside yeah. mm. and we're increasingly finding out that Americans love the seaside love, too. Love the There's seaside a lot of too. coast in America. Yeah, there yeah. is. The big yeah. coast. So, I mean, it's really lovely that our Whitby print that we think looks so quintessentially British. Yeah. Um, people in Maine and even people mm. on the Californian coast are buying it to wow. put in their yeah. seaside retreats. Um, but uh, yeah, Whitby does. I, th- I think I think we've been lucky. I think we, it's sort of like become a bit of a signature print mm. for us and people who know us. Which is lovely. I mean, kind of. There's nothing better than being a designer, and and there's there's one thing about you know uh, sell, selling something. And just selling something, but it's when some when somebody reacts in such a personal way that they really want. I mean, wallpaper is quite a big commitment mm. to to know that somebody has chosen to live every day with one of your prints um, is is incredible, mm. really. So you know, we never take that for granted. But we also have like secret bestsellers where we. It, it's like having a, a, a really good child that sort of doesn't cause you any trouble. So you sort of slightly... I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> so you kind of, we kind of like look at the sales and sort of like work out what's selling and everything and what we need to order. Mm. And then we kind of go like, oh gosh, that's I like really had no almost idea that nearly that was, sold out. Yeah. And you kind of, wow. it, it's quite a shock because it's just kind of getting on in the background yeah. and just being good. Yeah discovering that your, your, your child's secretly good at science and you th- didn't really... And you think they're an artist, <laughs> yeah, 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 and you've yeah, sent yeah. them to ballet lessons yeah. for the last <laughs> We've got a print called A Forest, mm. uh, which is named after one of our favourite Cure tracks from the 1980s. But it's called A Forest because 
It's actually an enlargement. The Mordale print that we were talking about features an oak tree uh, with a branch formation that's very graphic. And we basically blew it up and, and, and put it into a repeat. And that has become, so it's a kind of like foresty branch kind of mm. uh, abstract print. And as Keith was saying, that that's that's a, one of our secret successes. It, it, it just, I think that because it's it's a nice mixture of the current foliage look, but yeah. it mm. isn't actually overtly foliagey. Mm. You know, it's mm. kind of, so it works. Makes it timeless as well, doesn't it? So exactly. When that so kind if of you goes want out to, fashion, it's you, still yes, mm. yeah, yes. I, I mean, the the other thing about our our, our patterns we have, which we haven't really discussed, is the um, we we appeal to men as well. Mm. So it's kind of we're really proud that you know there are not many men pattern designers. Um, and there's not many brands that appeal sort of equally to, uh, like across mm. well across generations as well as kind yeah, of sexes that's very as well. True. And the other design that is is a is a bit of a popular one for us is um, Paisley Crescent from our Budrov's our, our kind of like 1970s Eastern inspired um, Budrov Suburbia collection, and that has that's a, de- a Paisley design. Yeah. And inside it, it has lots of. I'm just looking out of the window here. It's got um, lots of gorgeous uh, 1930s semis mm. uh, in a to, to sort of evoke a kind of like um, you know. The, well, in fact, the, but the, it was Bromley. The the the, the book it actually is based on, no way. It's based, <laughs> yeah, because it's based on the book Budra of Suburbia, which is right. which is set in this area. So this we're particular we're sitting area. in Bromley in yes. the 1930s yes. end of terrace exactly. right now. So. <laughs> So That's why I invited you here. Exactly. <laughs> it's a, it's our, it's, you should have some up. It is our perfect milieu, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so it's uh, it, so it's got this, but then juxtaposed with quite eastern scenes to sort mm. of evoke that you know cultural mix-up, which is mm. our British kind of you know heritage, um, and that has recently been accessioned into the Whitworth Galleries permanent collection oh, wow. which mm. we're really excited about but and the reason I mean what an honor yeah it was yeah, a real honor fantastic. and um, and they they the curators commended it for being for the very reason that it had uh, sort of um, it made a social comment and it had a sort of depth of story within mm. it so it took a traditional pattern which is of course eastern in in its origin, the Paisley pattern yeah. came from the east, but then we've kind of incorporated British mm. and Eastern designs within it. So, um, and they've wallpapered entire gallery in it as well. Wow, mm. fifty rolls. Wow, that must be fantastic. <laughs> it's really in, tall. And not in the most subtle colour. They've they've chosen our favourite colourway of it, which is tangerine dream, which is also a seventies yeah. reference. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's a, it's it's a bright ta- the entire gallery it's in incredible. a bright tangerine. So um, which is yeah, which is great. I shall have to find a picture of that and put it on the show notes because that is something you have to see I think yeah yeah so the thing we haven't talked about yet is the book yes <laughs> so um the book mid-century modern living the mini modern's guide to pattern and style so congratulations thank, thank you. you very much it's fantastic and I'm not saying that just because you're here um <laughs> the way you've put it together is brilliant because there's it's not just if you're into mid-century modern it's how to put rooms together it's it's the layering of you, obviously from what you've just been saying, the story behind how you feel about a room, but there's so much design knowledge in this book. And I love it that you've paired it with music mm-hmm. and food and cocktails. Oh, yeah. So, well, the cocktails um, is the best part. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, I, when you guys came in, you saw I've been writing little notes of things to look up in more detail like, <laughs> about some of these designers and, and like the drop chair. I didn't know that was called the drop chair. And I'm, it's gorgeous. Mm. But there's quite, um, there's quite a lot in here so if you want to know how to get mid-century design and make it work, this book is absolutely perfect. But if you're just into design and mm. colour and how to put things together, it just hits so many, um, it just ticks so many boxes. So how does it come about? Oh, I should just say it's also, it's by Carl Books and the photos are by Jan Baldwin. So did you go and shoot all the pictures in here? Yes, we styled all of, we styled everything in there. We styled mm. all the, um, the interiors, you know, it was kind of... Mm. Um, a very involved job. Yeah, I was going to say, I know. It's well, a hell of a lot of images to shoot. It's, yeah. it's a big book. Yeah, it was 
quite. Um, it was really good fun, though. Mm. I mean, um, we'd never we've never done a lot of styling before. We style for our um, photography for our wallpaper mm. um, shoots, but um, mm. we'd never done like rooms in other people's houses. So there was that kind of exciting thing of finding out what you were going to discover and what they already had and what you could bring to it. So that was. Um, and as, <laughs> quite, quite a challenge. <laughs> and as Keith pointed out um, at, at our book launch, um, we had to thank all the people who allowed us to wallpaper walls that they really didn't want yeah, wallpapering. Like, this is going <laughs> up here. <clears throat> so um, yeah, we found a really good technique of um, temporarily wallpapering. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at the wall behind your sofa here. Uh, temporarily wallpapering. Yeah, well, why have we got designs on getting, <laughs> <laughs> getting wallpaper on there before we leave? Um, yeah, because when but, we do shoots, if we have to, uh, we go into an empty white location, we quite yeah. often have to put wallpaper up and take it down the next day and then clean the wall and repaint it so it's perfect when you leave. So yes. the set, set designers or set builders yeah. know how to yes. do that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't so, have any set designers no. or no, set no, builders. No, it was more trial and error. And Hannah. So you <laughs> did the wallpapering. Oh, we yes, did everything. We did. Wow. This is, the, this is a mini modern thing. We do everything. When we when we turn up at a trade show and we see other brands where they're, they're kind of, you know, they've had built a team in mm. for the past three days <laughs> creating the their thing. Olympia stand. It's always it it's says. me, Keith and Hannah for three days. <laughs> In fact, we've only just treated ourselves to the luxury of having a, a somebody driver. to drive our van. So, um, yeah, this this year when we did Top Draw, we, we got somebody to drive mm. for us just because it's another thing. It stands to, big at Top Draw as yes, well, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so, um, And then we've got, after we've built mm. it, then we've got to stand on it for three days. Yeah. But back to the book. But, so, yes, we, we did. We, um, we, so... How long yeah. did it take... The whole book. Yeah, it's so, a big book. Well, we were just looking at the we we um we were looking at the diary last uh, last week, weren't we? Mm. We had our fur we we were commissioned last March, uh, formally to wow. do it. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then I think we probably started to write research and write in in May, didn't we? Yeah. So we we pretty much did it May, June, July, and August. Yeah. And That's a very quick turnaround to have a book. To be yeah. commissioned in March, and it's like the 1st of April today, yes. and I've got a hard copy and I've had it a couple of weeks. So yeah. <clears> most <throat> books are done like a year in advance before they even start getting published and everything. Yeah, so. it's my fault. It's like when it, we... Honestly, it is Mark's <coughs> fault, and I'm not going to say it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> we went into the meeting and... Um, they said, oh, they, what would you feel about bringing the deadline forward so that it doesn't get lost in the Christmas market? And we were like, well, well what, would that, what would the implications of that be? And then they just gave us a date of when it had to be delivered. And I kind of looked at Mark and he just went, oh, yeah, that's fine. I didn't mean <laughs> Say it was yes. fine. Say yes. And then go look and work to that deadline. And outside, I kind of went... We didn't even discuss it. Well, <laughs> but actually, is... I was really relieved that it worked so fast because there's one thing when you get into a project and your mind's really focused on it all the loose ends tie up mm. really easily and there's not things just lying around thinking like oh gosh we should have done that or like everything that we were working on per day because we were working on different sections of the book constantly mm. that they were all feeding in and we knew why we were doing certain things so mm. when it came to the shoots we knew all the elements to to mm. sort of highlight in 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 the shoots and sort of to make um you know, we were simultaneously writing it and and sort of styling it. Mm. So we kind of knew what points we were trying to make yeah. with um, with the shoots. It did mean that for a while our <coughs> our studio was mayhem. You probably noticed that, so the the main element of styling was for the seven key looks mm. slash moods yeah. that mm. we that we do at the back. So each one has got in typical us fashion each one has got a, a, a kind of name like beatnik beach house or ocean blue or granny takes a trip so they've all got these bonkers names so we had these sections in our studio where we were amassing um, <laughs> either our props yeah. or um, borrowed props or you know or things that we were kind of like going out and, and finding or bringing from one place to another yeah all getting put into these sections. So we'd have these ridiculous moments where Keith would go like, why is this in my granny takes a trip section? <laughs> <laughs> this is, well, this, I this is so... coded all it, of the boxes with the wallpaper that we were taking. So like... It, it, it's it so was... obviously Scandi rustic. <laughs> but, so uh, so we, were, we, we did have a sort of like chaotic moment yeah. when, uh, yeah, things were in... Also, we, we ended up 
shooting it and uh, styling and shooting in the height of summer when and um, as you know it was, know, really it was so, so hot, hot. Yeah. it was so hot it's and we really had hard. we had the odd back to back which was a bit tricky so we had a turnaround from Dungeness slash Rye we had two shoots down there and then had to come back and clean and style and our, stu- our studio in Camberwell and re-wallpaper it overnight wow to, um, gosh yeah so um, that was that was an exhausting it's exciting though yeah but yeah we, so I think uh, the, the deadline I think um, we we always work to the principle that if you want something doing give it to a busy person yes absolutely like, yeah and like I mean that. in the meantime yeah, sure we designed you, an entire I think you know that oh, rubbish you? I think most styles well the, the thing is I think I've come into this industry so if you're writing for a magazine or styling a shoot for anyone it's a short quick project essentially yes. mm, you yeah. have a deadline you have to have all the props by the shoot date it, without that if it's like a loose open thing you'd be like oh I'll get around to that later and then you never do it till the day before or the yeah. night before or something mm, yeah. so deadlines are just mm. and you get that fix and then you move on to the next one so yes. you're always kind of yeah it's never yeah. dull there's always something new to yeah. to look yeah. forward to I mean yeah. the, the the it's sort of tr- really made us work efficiently and really fast because we we actually designed our latest wallpaper collection during that period as well of course and you did. artworked <laughs> it and got it off into production so it kind of now i feel as if i can't actually do anything because i'm, I'm got really too much not that time. busy yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 need to give you some more work today yeah exactly <laughs> absolutely but I love, um oh, sorry, go on. oh sorry i was just gonna say but but that really touches on everything about the book because we do we did everything and the fact the fact is that um the book is a really personal journey of our love of mid-century. It's not the purist's journey of, of mid-century. It's how we came across mid-century in our in our youth, mm. but also um, and the, what influence it's had on our work and kind of the way that we live and 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 the way that we style things. Mm. So it's all a very personal book, and so us doing all the shoots and the styling for it just kind of adds to the yeah it makes the sense whole doesn't thing it? Yeah. then it is all about what mm. our take on it was mm. but i'm pleased that you said that um whether you like mid-century style or not mm. there's 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 so much the, information in it because i think what i mean some of the principles that we try to get across are uh again with our with our idea of pattern with a story your room is your story as well or your mm. your home is your story and that so one of our things is to say you know, um, when you're starting a scheme, so for instance, when you think about your colour scheme, I know it's it, it, people kind of like, where do you find inspiration for mm. your colour scheme? So one of the things that we say in the book is, don't just think, well, I've got a nice pair of curtains, I want to base it around that, yeah. which is perfectly legitimate. But you may have a book cover that you love. Mm. You may have, you know... Um, a, or, or a vase. A vase or, 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 or a collection or yeah. something. Or, um, or like a fabulous, you know... Um, painting. painting that mm. you kind of like picked up in the second hand shop and those colours are just the kind of colours that, so it's the emotion of it isn't it it's the yes, feeling exactly. it make, the way so, it makes you feel yeah precisely so um, I think that there's lots and lots of different mm. kind of ways that you can sort of start your journey into what into your interior design yeah. sort of scheme so I think what the, what you've done very well is that obviously you have a brand and a company that has a lot of the designs in here fit into mid-century obviously but the way you've shared your products and then explain the stories behind them all because that is basically rather than just going here's a great wallpaper go buy it it mm. just you feel the story behind them all and it works and you've not just done your products obviously you've done other people's mm. design classics and things that you can pretty much still get hold of now yes mm. so yeah. it yeah. is um it's that's done seamlessly so mm. very, we work very like impressive that people um were able to get the things that were in the mm. book by either hunting mm. around at car boot sales to get something similar mm. or actually there are things in there that are reissues of things that you could save up and buy. Mm. Um, you know, one piece of fabulous uh, mid-century furniture that's sort of slightly expensive is in one room will make a room mm. as opposed to buying lots and lots of sort of, um, you know, new furniture that you're trying to get the look with. Yeah. Mm. I did a little Hello, I've Got Mini Moderns here on Instagram, and we've had a couple of questions come through. Um, one is, how do I get the look? We've kind of covered this a little bit, but if they just want to get a mid-century modern look, where, where would you suggest people start? Well, we've, we've sort of mentioned the sideboard, yeah. haven't we? So that's, yeah. I think the sideboard is the perfect thing. 
I would say, um, I mean, there's so many things that are around at the minute that actually have mid-century mm. uh, at their heart. So even, for instance, the, the, the current plant look, um, yeah. you know, that that really, it was in the post-war years that people really started to bring plants into mm. their homes. And one of the reasons was that people started to go away on holiday and see all these things like, oh. you, know, you know, spider plants, for instance, they were just growing in the ground in yeah. Spain, you know, and, yeah. like, and, and then, uh, but, but, uh, you know, or further afield. And then those have kind of like become house plants for us. So, but for instance, if you love plants and everybody's really introducing mm. foliage into their homes, you may just want to go out and get a classic 1950s spindly legged plant stand. Yes. Mm. And make a little feature of that. And that's going to just sort of skew your uh your 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 plant mm. display into a slight mid century kind of yeah. style um but also simply uh, more simply than that as well I mean, which is a very good point mark thank you uh, um, but you've is, got a better one no <laughs> <laughs> is you but also we have color palettes in 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 the book as well which which show different groups of colors that go together that are actually mid century combinations um so even something like uh, the trend in, in using pink and green um, now, which mm. is really now, is a really old um, mm. mid-century colour palette. It's a classic um, 50s Yeah, colour, I mean, it all started palette. with Russell Wright's American modern um, ceramic wear and mm. tableware. Yeah, yeah. So that combination of the, of the, the what you, people are calling millennial pink is actually mid-century <laughs> pink with um, with green um, is a total mid-century colour combination but um, I mean a simple uh, you know wooden framed armchair you know the, the, mm. the lovely mm. sort of yeah um, that um, in, a, in a room instantly you know as a contrast piece mm. of seating that's an instant um, mm. mid century. And, and you can style. buy those from like <coughs> either second hand ones or really, you know, expensive Danish yeah. ones. But also like IKEA do a wooden framed um, mm. armchair as well. So you can kind of mix things up from design classics to high street to second hand finds mm. um, really easily and really build something up that all is coherent yeah in the book i think i read that you said it's better to buy one good piece and then add small accents so if you can afford to buy one actual designer piece and then add in the, the high street kind of tie-ins yes that's yeah it's always rather than buying loads of inexpensive replicas that yeah just don't quite hit the nail on the head yeah yeah i think that the other thing that I, i'm quite liking at the minute is that people are buying a, a, a sort of refinding a lot of post-war British furniture was it it was inspired by the Danish more expensive mm, Danish yeah. stuff mm. and and those pieces weren't so popular a few years ago because they would have been considered not of the same caliber as mm. the Danish stuff mm. but what I love about especially young people these days is that they don't really they, 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 they're not bothered about sort no. of pure pedigree of furniture mm. if it looks good if it's got the look then you know it 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 fits the bill yeah and i like the fact that people have been quite mm. eclectic and and quite you know level about what what you know what, yeah. what they can introduce i mean we've got a g plan um sideboard which was my mum's my mum um, left it to me but people would probably expect that we'd have some sort of really swanky um Mm. Danish rosewood thing, wouldn't mm. they? But yeah. you know, it's kind of. Well, I'd love one, but <laughs> <laughs> we've neither got the money or the space. <laughs> the Danish pieces tend to be sort of like almost like a third bigger as well. Yeah, I think like yeah, because they have more space. I think yeah. that, that I think that yeah. Mm. Uh, whereas our pieces have always been made British, British mid-century furniture. The originals mm. have always been made a little bit um, more compactly, mm. haven't they? So also from what you were saying, that's a memory piece for you, isn't it? That's from your mum. Yeah, so course. it's that story behind that piece of furniture is the same as like having a story behind the wallpaper. It's like it's quite nice to have things like that, isn't it? Well, even, even especially on the side when it's got my nephew's name scribed into <laughs> it when he was little. <laughs> <laughs> The design feature. Yes. yes. Um, another question is, where do you source from? I know you touch on this in the book, but if you're looking, where do you put sales are the best? Um, I mean, obviously, it's it's dead easy to go online and, mm. and source, and it's 
you know, and um, you almost have to kind of draw yourself away from, because we always say that half of the fun is go, it's, you know, like going out and, and, and just looking at mm. all the, all the stuff is, is half the fun. Um, so I think do a lot of research online and obviously if you find the perfect piece then mm. online is going to mm. like work for you. But Seaside towns are our favourite yeah. places because they're always packed with like junk shops and yeah. secondhand shops. And yeah. We tend to avoid places that are antique shops. Yeah. Because antique shops never have the kind of thing that we're looking for. They no. tend to have like, you know, expensive things from different periods. So so what what would just have been described as junk shops? Obviously also all the second hand, sh- uh, all the charity shops yeah. and so mm. on are, are really good places to source. It depends whether you're looking for big pieces or accessories mm. i mean we've just spent the weekend in hastings and it, it's just the, the, hastings it's just, high street oh like it's just, just yeah, 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 yeah. like yeah. so there's a great big park <clears throat> on the um on the beach so every now and again i'll say well my kids are a bit old for this now but i used to go why don't you get coffee watch the kids in the playground and i'm just going to go and do the, the high street <laughs> because the shop's up there there's one shop there where it's like it's got two floors down and two floors up and it's all higgledy piggledy yeah, and it's yeah. like it's a real tr- you have to yeah. you have to search it out yeah exactly and, and the searching is always the fun yeah thing. but it's that whole having a list <clears throat> having a hit list of what you're looking for yeah well, hilariously this weekend um just after we shot the book i smashed our mustard <gasps> handkerchief hem a uh, uh, handkerchief glass vase oh. didn't I mm. and um, weirdly this weekend we found exactly oh. the replacement it's the same size and the same colour and everything yeah. in Hastings wow mm. Actually, six was, pounds technically wow. it was in St Leonard's oh St it. Leonard's <laughs> we were in. Um, we'd gone over the border <laughs> but I don't want to be overly um, south centric I mean I have to say we were we were at a wedding in Campbelltown, like, you know, mm. right Where's up Where's Campbelltown? In, it's... Um, um, Mull of Kintyre. Uh, yeah, oh, by you Mull of Kintyre. right up, up right, there, yeah. Yeah, right up in Scotland. And we found just the best second-hand shop. And we just, like, we, we came home with, like, just, like... Did you take your van? Like, we had, <laughs> you we need your van, back. don't you? Where have you go? <laughs> we, came came back, we came back with... Um, uh, it was all small stuff. Dark but it was glass like, decanters yeah, look, with matching ooh. glasses, which look like the Tom Dixon ones, don't mm, they? Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, Hornsey um, jugs. Yeah. Like, fabulous things. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, so just get out We have quite a lot look. of good ones in the north as well. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, outside of London, I reckon there. Mm. That's the best thing when you go outside. Whenever you go anywhere, you're like, oh, I'm just going to pop into this shop quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Ooh, another, just another quick, um, we, we've actually never acted on this, but um, all around kind of um, the sort of um, Milton Keynes kind of oh, area, yeah? mm. a lot of the British uh, furniture manufacturing happened around that mm. sort of oh. area, sort of like Harpenden and all above. Um, what am I trying to say Hatfield that, mm. those kind of places yeah. um, well around there apparently there are still like the second hand shops are full you're um, making the like, girl with yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. kind of around there weren't they and kind wow. of kind of like that so, so, yeah. so that's the place those to go and have a look, look for, for bigger pieces yeah. for, for furniture Ooh, yeah. that's a very good tip mm. right two last questions yeah. first of all what are you looking for at the moment are you searching for some, are you like collecting anything that I need to look out for for you um Oh, you've stumped us now. Yeah, so, we're kind of much more eclectic than. Oh, that. you like you just see something and go for it. You don't well, it might a... be it might be that we kind of are watching an old film, or we're kind of find an old book which then triggers something off, and we kind of start mm. thinking, oh, that would be good to have. Mm. Um, so we're not kind of there at the minute, and because we're, we're, we're I was so, gonna say, you just finished the book. You're like, I was no, going, we're shopping. so blind. We're so blind with so many products. <laughs> <laughs> No, we do have a bit of an obsession. We've we've recently gone a little bit later in in the mid century period. So we're obsessed with nineteen seventies West German West German pottery mm. um, at the minute, which yeah. can be like uh, it can be quite sort of big and ugly, but yeah. in quite a fabulous way. Yeah. Um, you have to be a little Is that bit quite discerning. hard to find. It's uh, well, not in the <laughs> <laughs> not where we go. Not in <laughs> <laughs> Not in Germany. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, we love the fact that it's called West Germany because, of course, like Germany's just Germany now. Yeah. But, but it's from the yeah. period when there was still East Germany.
Germany and West Germany. Mm. Um, yeah, we're watching Deutschland 80, 86 at the moment, so yeah, it's kind so of... It's, it's very in our, in our <laughs> heads. But, so we love the West German pottery stuff. Mm. Um, that, that's, that's kind of there for us, isn't it? So, Last question, what mm. are you working on at the moment or what's next? Because obviously the book has just launched, so you're mm. <laughs> so <pretty> retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, well, our our current wallpaper collection is called Culture, um, and that's um, we've been able to rekindle over the you know sort of dec- past decade or so. We've uh, worked a lot with cultural and heritage organisations like South Bank Centre, the Jeffrey Museum. Um, Museum of London, Museum of London, um, National it, Theatre, the Courtauld Gallery. Mm. So, so we and we love working on those because again mm. we can get into some research and and stories and so on. Um, so we've we've revisited a lot of those kind of uh, relationships for to launch our culture collection, but we have uh, we've we've sort of got more momentum on that. So. Coming up, we have a, a couple more interesting collaborations, including the the Whitworth Gallery that we were saying. Yeah, have got our. So we've just done a range with the Whitworth Gallery, which launches pretty soon, which is based on um, on the Pace Crescent wallpaper that they've got up in the gallery, and that's up for for a whole year mm. in that gallery before it comes down. So that's quite exciting. So some nice products that <clears throat> kind of like so that, that are going to be exclusive to the Whitworth. Mm. And then um, we've got another couple of sort of heritage stroke culture people that we're working with which we can't tell you no, about yet that's good always um, exciting keep us posted obviously we're having brainstorms at the moment with the publishers about the next book oh fantastic so um yeah yeah so, so we'll have another like so three have, months deadline oh, right. so i'll see you this <laughs> time next year then yeah <laughs> If I've not al- before. I've already <laughs> promised that I won't make any rights. I've said, Mark, keep your mouth shut in meetings. Yeah, I'm really <laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming to my 1930s house. It's been an absolute pleasure to chat with you today. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Lots of fun. Thanks for listening to the Inside Stylist podcast. You'll find all the details from today's show over on the show notes at insidestylist.com. If you enjoy the show, I'd love it if you would head on over to iTunes and rate and review it. It's the best way to help other people find the show and I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, bye for now.